Getting the most out of AI art tools needs empathy. You've gone too far, Samson. Do not empathize with the machines. What I mean is we need to understand what the machines understand. And in today's video, I'll show you a tool called Phaser Tech, which does a fantastic job at visualizing just this. By the end of this video, you will have a better understanding of how to write effective prompts. So let's dive straight in and have a look at how it works. So when you come into Fraser Tech, you have the option to select which of the neural networks you're working with. We're gonna give it a crack with Midjourney. It also works with Stable Diffusion, Disco Diffusion, Darling 2, Crayon, and others. So the first thing it asks you to do is select the type of content that you're creating. So you're either creating a drawing, a photo, a sketch, or a 3D render. You have the option to include your own custom version of this. So this is one of the basic things to define when creating your art. In this instance, I'm gonna go with a photo. Now, next up, it has this very useful tool which outlines some of the most important points for writing effective descriptions. Being an effective prompt writer requires skills in articulation, and description. So what you need to do is use at least three words, at least one noun, no negations, which means no nots, say there's no hats, for example, at least one adjective, and at least one dependent object, which means one object is using another object. You don't need to use all of these, but it is suggested to get the most out of the tools. So for example, we could put a, a wise goat drinking tea. So we've got all of these have been ticked. We've got the dependent object, which is the T. We've got the adjective, which is a wise. No negations, at least one noun. We've got Y, uh, we've got goat and cup of tea, and it's more than three words. So you'll also notice on the right hand side, a number of images are generated at the same time. These come from a huge library that they have from Stable Diffusion, Midjourney, and Dali. And pick and choose the most similar images they have to the prompts that you are writing. So you can instantly get a rough idea of what might come up. But bear in mind that none of these will be exactly what you're looking for and your end results are likely to be vastly different. So go ahead and press next. The next thing that art generators love is defining styles. So you can pick any artist, photographer, illustrator, or even artistic movement and inform the generators that this is the vibe that you're looking for. In this tool, you also get a library of existing styles which you can view. So you can go ahead and pick anything from here. I'm gonna pick uh, Steve McCurry, this photographer, but feel free to put in a custom one as well. You can put in anything like this. You might put in Vincent van Gogh, Frida Kahlo, Leonardo da Vinci, Alfonso Mucha, Mucha, whoever floats your boat. Next up, it's great to define the color palettes inside of the works. Now there's a few that I've been using that are not included in the suggestions here, which I recommend experimenting with as well. You can ask it for a warm color palette, a cold color palette. You can ask it for a desaturated color palette or palettes such as fluorescent, neon, pastel, effervescent, aquatic, botanical, cosmic color palette. You can also ask it to use different types of color schemes, such as analogous, which uses colors which are more similar to each other and complement each other very well. You could also ask for complementary colors, which are colors that are opposites to each other on the color spectrum, like orange and blue or purple and green. And doing this refines the amount of colors that are put into the piece. Generally, unless you define the colors, there is a hell of a lot of color bombing that goes on in these works. The art generators will put every single shade that you've ever seen inside of your piece. So to get better prompts, to get better work, define your color palettes. In this case, I'm gonna use my own custom color palette and I'm gonna define it as, as a complementary color palette. So the next thing you can do is to add a texture. So the art generators understand textures very well. It has a broad library of resources to draw from regarding texture. However, adding in textures is not always necessary if it's self-evident what you're creating. So in this case, I'm not going to add a texture. And you can simply put in a space and press OK in this tool to do that. Now, another thing that these art generators understand particularly well is resolution. So you can have an extremely high definition image or you can have an extremely low definition image. 
And the benefits of having a low definition image is you can get some very distinct stylized examples, perhaps some pixel art. But in most cases, you're gonna to want to define the highest detail possible. So it's really important every time you create a prompt, if you want it to be detailed, that you say that. And to do that, you just have to use uh, words like 4K, ultra high definition. So in this example here, it's giving you this option. So we're just gonna click on that. Now the tools have a sense of emotion. They can feel love. They can feel sadness. They can feel inspired. They can give you works that are angry. They can give you some fun works. They can elicit desire, fear, contentment, contempt, surprise, confusion, interest, hmm, disgust, <laughs> realization, amusement. <laughs> One is amused and pain. Oh. Ah. So when creating your artworks, you want to give it a feeling. Imagine how you want the viewer of your work to feel. What is the emotion that's carrying your piece? I believe that the greatest artworks have an intent of emotional response that they're looking to elicit from the viewer. So define that. And for my example, I'm going to choose fun. Finally, we can define what sort of era it is that we're looking for. This can go all the way back to primitive society, cave paintings, to the future, giving it a futuristic feel. So these are styles that really resonate well with the machines. And you can pick whichever you like. I'm gonna go with contemporary. Finally, we get our prompts spat out. And you can see that we've got a comprehensive description of what it is we're looking for. And this tool is great at making sure we consider all parts of a possible prompt. But it's not perfect, and I very much recommend that you manipulate and coax, caress, and refine this prompt to get what you want. So, first of all, I'm gonna take this prompt, I'm gonna hop into mid journey, I'm gonna put in my imagine command, and I'm now gonna adjust and refine this prompt. So, we've got a complementary color palette. So we're gonna start arranging these things. We've got, I'm gonna move the noun to the front, which is a wise goat drinking a cup of tea. I'm gonna add a comma to separate this from the rest. We're gonna keep the complementary color palette. We're gonna move photo to the front. I'm actually gonna remove the style of Steve McCurry right here and also created that contemporary. I'm gonna leave in 4K ultra high, high resolution with a feeling of fun. I'm gonna change fun to mischief. I'm gonna add in, in the style of Wes Anderson. So he's one of my favorite film directors. And we're gonna see if we get some relevant imagery from that. I'm also gonna change the aspect ratio for this example. I'm gonna change it to three by four. So what I've done here is I've refined the prompt that it gave us. I've removed redundancies and I've added in more detail where necessary. So when you're writing these prompts, imagine there are these different parameters that the machine understands really well. And if you use these, it's going to be able to communicate and collaborate in exactly the manner you expect it to. So here we have four options for our prompt, and we can choose which one of these we like to upscale. You can see that we've got a wise goat. It's got the complementary colors. It's in a style evoking that of Wes Anderson. And it's a very detailed, consistent image, apart from perhaps this first one where the goat is morphing slightly into the cup of tea. And this one, the relationship between the tea is not so striking. Once you get some results, you can also see what you want to fine tune inside of the prompt. I'm going to change Wes Anderson to one of his films, which is going to be The Grand Budapest Hotel. I'm going to remove complementary color palette and I'm going to adjust slightly by lessening the importance of the cup of tea. So just making it tea instead of cup of tea. So I've continued to use this exact prompt and just re-roll it and upscale my favorites, changing a few variations along the way. And here are my two favorites, and I'm pretty pleased with them. They certainly meet my expectations. And these two perfectly match my intentions of how the piece wanted to be. I, I think my favorite is certainly the one on the right, uh, with the colors and the, uh, the face of this wise goat. It certainly for me could fit into a Wes Anderson film. There's something slightly softer about the option on the left, but I love the uh, sincerity of this sweet goat and the details on the cup itself. So that's how to write better prompts. Thank you for watching. If you've enjoyed this video, I have a course on Udemy. So check that out in the description below.
And please like, comment and subscribe for more content on AI art. It has been a pleasure to have you with me and I wish you a delightful day.